everybody. Can you hear us all okay? Yeah. Um, no. Thank you so much for joining us in your very piece of Thank you to Golden Thread um, for hosting us. Thank you. Thank you to Josh and the entire staff and Golden Thread. We're very honored to be here. Um, the topic of our panel, the, the Arab Spring and its dramatic reverberations, is something that we've been, as a company, as Hybrid Theatre Works, thinking a lot about and incorporating it into our own work. So it's a topic that we feel very comfortable speaking about. Um, obviously, there will be a, a nice variety of opinion over the course of our panel, but we invite you to find us afterwards and continue the discussion um, that way. So, um, uh, myself, I'm JJ Alfar, I'm a producer and the executive director of Hybrid Theatre Works. I'm also a theatre director. Um, I am Jordanian-American, um, but now I'm questioning my hyphen. <laughs> so, what can I say? I'm a Mas, I'm a Mongol, I embrace it. Um, it's part of the, the, the thinking about how we came up with what to call ourselves, hybrid theater works, thinking about this sort of layered identity, this, this national form of identity, um, and seeing that as you know, the, the trend. And this is my associate. Hi, I'm Tracy Cameron Francis. Um, I'm a theater director and also the artistic director of Hybrid Theater Works. Um, and I'm Egyptian American. Um, <laughs> so, from Sansesh. Sansesh, yeah. Um, and then Jake will tell you a little bit more about Hybrid Theater Works. So, our organization is really more of a collective of artists, and we have artists mostly based in New York, but also all over the world. Um, we are seeking to create work that's at the intersection of arts and activism. And, and all the many ways that you can define that, but mainly with a focus on international work and international collaboration, and really trying to use technology as well to push ourselves in that, in that regard. Our official mission, if you're wondering, Hybrid Theater Works is an organization that creates international collaborations in the intersections of art and activism. Um, two of our ongoing programs are the Artist Response Forum and the Global Spotlight Series. Uh, the Artist Response Forum was created out of a need to to really shorten the time frame between the thing that happened and the artistic response. And so we were looking to invite artists to create short form work, we're talking 10 minute pieces, that were staged in site specific locations, in non traditional theater locations, giving artists a chance to really engage as global citizens, as um, arbiters of, of um, you know, different media and, and different schools of thought surrounding global issues and give them a chance to really dive in and create work that is immediate. Um, one of the topics that we did, which Tracy will tell you a little bit more about, was a show called The Revolution will be live streamed. And so in just a second, out. you'll be seeing some images from our show. Um, and that show featured artists from all over the Middle East, as well as Arabic artists in New York. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Um, and going off of that, so part of our goal as a company and with Arts Response Forum is to have our artists engage with things that are currently happening in the world and to continually be responding oh, okay. to and incorporating that into our work. And we felt as you know, Middle Eastern American artists, um, when the uprisings happened in the Middle East, that you know, it greatly affected how we approached our work either with Middle Eastern artists and also our work about the Middle East. Um, personally, as a director, I've directed now three new plays dealing with the Egyptian uprising in the last year. And so I'm always curious about you know, the need to respond and the different ways the artists have responded to these um, changes in the region. And the thing that you are behind us now, um, this was kind of a smaller version of these types of responses. We engaged artists from all over the region and from the U.S. to just respond somehow. Uh, there were dance pieces, there were multimedia pieces, there were also traditional types of plays as well as visual art. So it basically created a conversation um, using art rather than discussing it as we're doing now, um, giving different viewpoints and responses to what was happening in the world then. And part of the structure of the forum is to allow space for performance, but then also allow time for just unstructured conversation. And it's always followed by a little bit of a party. So we, we don't have a formal discussion, but it really allows people to sort of pursue the threads of the conversation that they found most interesting or talk to the artists that they were really inspired by their work. Um, so, um, why don't we just let you guys each um, introduce yourselves briefly and just tell a little bit about your background and also the background situation currently um, in your country of origin or country you're presenting today. We want to move this towards you. Yeah. Right. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Nat Hassani. I'm from Iran, actually. I live in Tehran. I'm part of living in Seattle. Um, I, I'm a playwright and I 
presentation in the University okay. of Tehran. Um, is it enough? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Hadia Musa. Um, I'm an assistant lecturer um, at Tehran University, it's an Egyptian uh, university, a faculty parts, uh, theater department. And I'm here as um, a scholar in residence. Um, so far, I'm affiliated to um, um, NYU, but I'm allowed to transfer to CUNY University um, under the supervision of Professor Mark Carlson. Um, is he not possible? <laughs> okay, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Jay Abdul. I come from Syria. I'm an actor I'm a, and a musician as well. Uh, I have been in this uh, entertainment business and uh, I mean theater, TV and films since 88. Um, I've done more than 42 films, a uh, bunch of, I mean some 1,000 TV shows and 21 theatrical play, uh, plays in more than four languages. <laughs> Now I am here in the United States. I came um, due to the situation back home in Syria, and uh, I'm based in Los Angeles. Thank you. And um, also, we were supposed to have a Tunisian director, Nasrin Benmadi, with us, who's unable to join us for today. We do have responses that we we sent questions out to our panelists, and we asked, we sent them to um, another Tunisian director, not Nasrin, um, but Lofi Aftour who uh, has created some really remarkable work in Tunisia. So we do have his responses to our questions as well, and I'll, I'll be referring to those even though they couldn't join us in person. Um, so we're going to start with our first question, which is, how do the social and political changes in the Middle East shape or change your artistic, artistic practices in your country? And how the aesthetics change? Um, so basically just give a, a little bit of background on how, well, for you it'll be a little bit different, but how the theater and performance scene was before uprisings and also post uprisings. Um. Okay. Um, actually, I think uh, I'm the I, I should be the last person because uh, I didn't come from an Arab country uh, because of the language. Firstly, because of the language, we are not included as Arab people, Middle Eastern. Yeah, Middle Eastern. but we are Middle Eastern. So uh, the Arab Spring is what didn't happen in Iran, actually. Um, if I speak about um, the main movements, and the main social and political movements in Iran, I have to speak about three, three movements or revolution. The first revolution refers to Islamic Republic of Iran, which happened about more than 30 years ago, in um, actually 1978 something. And of course, it was a big show culturally, economically, politically, and of course, its influence on uh, art is uh, deniable. Uh, and then the next, the next movement can be um, the reformist catch power about 16 years ago. Um, Mr. Khatami uh, got the power and he elected as the um, president. And of course, that time also we can uh, see lots of, lots of changes uh, in art and specifically in theater, which is my main major. And the third one, refers to about four years ago. Uh, we call it um, based on, I mean, uh, it depends on which party we belong. Uh, we call it a green um, movement. It didn't, I mean, it, it wasn't a kind of revolution. It didn't have any obvious result. It was just a kind of movement, and we call it green movement. And uh, of course, I can speak about how, um, how it, um, I mean, affect um, the theater um, in Iran and some other arts. Thank you. Okay. Um, about Egypt, um, before the Egyptian revolution on set, all, all of the Egyptian theaters have suffered a lot. The state fund theaters were suffering from the bureaucracy, the blind censorship, shortage of fund, and enlightened management. Limited performing areas, centralization of arts, mainly in Cairo and Alexandria. Um, most of the performances were adaptations of well-known and practices, whether Arabic or Western plays. No one dared to commence 
on our rulers' actions and decisions. When they wanted to criticize um, um, the rule, they simply use uh, samples to manipulate the censorship. Um, actually, most of the Egyptian artists get tired and despair, struggling with narrow minds and um, a Victorian um, system. They have to fight the bureaucrats, the censor, the emergency law, all of these crippling production conditions and restrictions. Um, our former regime knew that theater has its far-reaching political implications, as it may convert to be a, a protest um, if the audience has such awareness um, for, um, for that they surrounding the theater and the media in general action and put them under their control to be sure that they could suppress any kind of criticizing voices. Um, and the question now, what had happened after the onset of the Egyptian Revolution? So far, um, the Egyptian Revolution has, hasn't made a um, radical effect in our cultural scene. As for now, we haven't achieved any kind of change in our um, organizational structure and um, our working methods, uh, funding policies, and to be honest, no one um, could expect such a change to take place in view of the rapid, rapid succession of uh, ministers and um, uh, that we, we do have so far and the haphazard and confusion uh, decisions. The theatrical organization in Egypt with its current condition is not um, qualified to satisfy artists revolutionary uh, anxious and they will not stop their fighting to demand their right to, to free uh, expression and artistic freedom. Um, I think the only few and um, slow steps that we have been taken by the artists um, since the revolution's um, outbreak, from my point of view, could be summed up in two things. First, um, we do have now the, the um, outdoor art festival um, in Fenwick and Medan or Art Square. Um, it takes place each month. Uh, bringing um, various kinds of artists like musicians, um, uh, painters and performers. And we do have also the, um, uh, the theater streets. Um, uh, one of the very important steps that the artists gain because of the revolution that the art in general and the theater in particular now has the right to go down to streets. And they can object the cultural um, uh, present that we had before. Um, I think we need this kind of uh, move of theater first of all to reach the people wherever they are and to get rid of the art centralization. Second uh, step we, we, we have achieved um, to now that we, we witnessed after the onset of the Egyptian revolution um, a powerful upset uh, of a new branch of the documentary theater um, that has been um, absent from the Egyptian uh, theatrical scene uh, during the, the last decades, um, and which we, we, we call the Verbatim the uh, Theater. Um, this kind of political art that we have been uh, denied many years ago. Um, for example, uh, we do have Tariya Basuni, Tahrir stories, pages from the Tahrir uh, Dairy, Hanging up the monsters uh, by the light of the revolution, moon, and uh, Naira Suleiman. Um, uh, no time for arts. Okay. Also, um, the, the um, feature that we can um, um, have from, from those um, uh, performances that um, all of them, um, or most of them, uh, were, were a result of um, improvisational um, workshops and um, you know um, I think the revolution succeeded in making such a communal um, spirit that we had missed a lot during the, um, the last decades. Finally, um, the only thing that I can say is that um, our revolution is still ongoing or what, um, what we call El Saura Mustamera, okay, um, the revolution continues. Um, and despite the unrest that we are still suffering from, uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of us suffering from, um, we are very optimistic about the coming future. Um, you know, um, 
to have a radical change that takes time. So just just wait and you, we will be able to, to achieve what we want. Thank you. Thank you so much. You made my life easier. <laughs> <laughs> so we can copy paste what she said and apply in Syria. It's exactly the same. Since 60s, artists try and do their best to reflect the political, actually all artists are politics in a certain way. So um, artists and specifically theater, they tried and did their best to do what they had to do in Syria, but the, the oppression and the repression and the, uh, the dictatorship that we experienced was always surrounding them and forbidding them to do certain um, activities or artistic activities. Like painters also and cartoonists, like musicians everywhere, uh, singers I mean, because they don't understand music. So uh, I, I know from my, um, from my experience, we always have tried to do theater plays and always it was disaster and very, very, very difficult to realize because always we've got somebody in the audience before the play is shown who is correcting us and advising, let's get rid of this, and why are you saying that, and it's no need to say this, why don't we replace it with this idea, that would be better for the play, and we all know how, how much an artist is, um, is struggling to make a wonderful show, so he can't, he can't get rid of any word, any Karma. So they come and say, let's don't mention this and don't mention that. Um, the regime in Syria has tried all these years to make the cup of the mafia or the head of the snake look as an angel. So they permitted all artists to criticize everybody down or below the president, below the family, let me say, because it is, or it's still a family business. And all the artistic activities were to criticize and make fun of those aspects below the family. So you couldn't touch the family. And once the artist is brilliant, the family would contact him to become a friend. Mm -hmm. And then, without sensing what is he doing, where is he going, he becomes one of the family. Now when the revolution started in Syria, so many, um, so many artists started to. Well, well, they wanted they 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 wanted us to appear on TV and speak in favor of the military and the security service, and so many of us didn't do that. We fled. Uh, we are spread over all, all over all over the world, and I when I first came to to America. Uh, I was frightened and I was very scared of speaking up. So my wife, who is here, who is more courageous than I am, suggested, why don't you do something, a play regarding this revolution to reflect some, like your friends did, inside some of them were killed. But let's do something. We are here in the United States. We have at least we are free to speak up and do something on stage. And I was scared at the first beginning. I said, no, 
No, I'm, I'm not. And little by little, we started to create a little scene. Let's see. I was playing. I, I was playing on stage and pantomiming some something. At the beginning, I was very scared. I was telling her, "I'm afraid of someone in the audience will report me and they will harm my hands." Back. And yes, by the days, by the days going on, and all the terrific and the horrific uh, war going on there, uh, I decided to put a mask on my face. Then, when the show was that close, I decided not to use the mask. I became a little bit more brave. Yes, uh, that's why they try to put the fear in our hearts in, in order not to touch uh, where the where the where uh, I mean the focal point of the problem in in in, in our time. Thank you. Okay. Going off of that, um, I want to talk a little. You guys have touched on this a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit about um, how you feel censorship, both government censorship, yes. self censorship, and also censorship from the culture and the community um, have affected. The work, and also, you know, especially for you, Jay, you know, and also for everybody, when there's a war going on, how appropriate is it to do performance, and what is the role of performance when there is an ongoing conflict, um, in terms of how dangerous it is and how appropriate it is to still be creating art in the wake of that and in the presence of that conflict? Yes, uh, uh, regarding censorship, uh, censorship, sorry, censorship. Uh, we have a very huge and powerful censorship in Syria. And by time, it becomes a part of the artist himself. Because I need to be on stage and to perform and to do and to be part of this artistic movement or part, uh, artistic. Uh, Wave, I mean, uh, anyway, but by time rehearsing, we say, ah, oh, let's not mention that. Because, you know, you know, they will come and say, I know. So let's not lose our time to with all this stuff. So this stuff, which meant to be our mission in life, suddenly becomes uh, something I got. <laughs> Why? So, uh, and I mean, this is in every aspect in, in art, not only in theater. Uh, TV is more dangerous for them because everywhere in, in the Arab world, theater is less viewed than TV. You know, so many people don't go to theater, but yes, we have theater, but TV is more dangerous. So, the most censorship is in TV. Still, I, we, we always try to do Hamlet. I say, why Hamlet? <laughs> <laughs> Hamlet! You go and pick something else more popular, people know and can affect people and can be understood by people. Uh, I, I like Hamlet. What, 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 do, you, what do you think? Look, the uh, the merchant of Venezia, uh, something that uh, 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 attached to our culture or to our struggle against this enemy behind borders. But let's talk about something like Hamlet or Kings or, or, or Caesar or Julius Caesar. No, 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 it's not. So it's always we have a censorship that sometimes you understand and some other times which is more. You don't understand why. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about, you just mentioned a little bit more about, you know, Dali, you just mentioned Dali's work and Dali's Salma's work, which is, you know, going, is a lot more direct than the previous more symbolic work that's coming out of Egypt. I mean, it's very, the new work I've noticed out of it is much more directly political and directly referencing the situation. Um, can you talk a little bit about how the censorship, self censorship, and government censorship has shifted? or 
I believe um, that when you um, you perform in the street, it's um, it gives it gives you um, the space to say what you want, okay. And when you participate, your um, your opinion will be um, directly um, in front of the, the audience. Um, no one can put this kind of um, blind censorship uh, because no one can um, restrict the the. Um, the performers uh, from saying uh, something uh, suddenly in, in the um, in, in between the, the, the lines or something like that. So actually, uh, the censorship um, is still um, or does exist in the uh, public uh, uh, theaters more than the uh, street theaters. Yeah. So um, and for that, I I say to you, yes, at least, um you know, uh, like uh, something um, like a victory or a game after the, the revolution, that we, we have this um, space to, to perform directly to the, the, the audience. Uh, before the, um, the revolution, we, we, we I, I think 100% we haven't um, such a chance to, to do that before. Actually, um, most of the energy as writers, playwrights, and any other kinds of writers, are spent for avoiding uh, red lines. It's what we do. Uh, and actually, we are, it's a kind of fight, fighting. Uh, we fight censors, and they fight us. And we know each other very good. And we try to prove our uh, abilities, and at the same time, they try to prove their abilities. So about um, maybe 20 years ago, it was much easier to avoid censorship because they didn't know anything about us. But now they know any, everything about our tricks. And we know anything about their they tricks. So even, uh, I, I want to continue what you say, what you tell about um, Shakespeare and Hamlet. I want to say sometimes Hamlet is uh, difficult to be performed in Tehran because Hamlet is about and um, a kind of passive intellectual, which we can find ourselves in him. So if we if we dramatize, dramatize Hamlet as a passive intellectual, intellectual censors um, will get it. I mean, immediately. And then we try to find another way, and they try to um, catch up. And so it's a kind of a game between us and. Censors. I, I, my, my, one of my last plays is about censorship because I felt that censorship is the most important thing in my own life. And I suddenly I found myself as a person who even in my dreams tried to find a way to avoid red lines. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a play called Asphalosophelin. Uh, you know what it means. Asphalosophelin is a kind of the, the lowest part of the hell. And I wrote about a censor um, who um, had an accident and he um, uh, went, went to co coma, if I can express myself rightly. And then her wife, try, his wife, tried to, she tries to continue um, uh, her husband's responsibility, but uh, she can't because she, she really, really engaged with the book um, the man was um, censored and uh, she felt in love with the writer. So <laughs> I sent it to the, um, I, I, actually it is the very brief of the play. Uh, I, I sent it to the, um, the place for being censored. And they told me that, <laughs> to be oh, approved. yeah, yeah, exactly, to be approved. And wow. they told me that, wow, it's crazy. You, you wrote about us. I said, yeah. <laughs> and I, I told them, yes, I wrote about you, but I just tried to show how, I mean, you are human being, and you are not our enemy. And I, I just tried to get closer to you. Actually, I just wrote this play to feel more, to feel closer to you, to understand you. <laughs> so, um, but unfortunately, they didn't approve it. <laughs> so, um, actually, um, yes, it's a big problem. But, um, I mean, you have to live in 
Iran to know how yes. everything is a kind of game in Iran. Everything never got really serious. I mean, when you speak about censorship, it never gets really, really serious. You always have chance to find a way and, um, I mean, avoid the red lines. So um, we, we are really trying to keep on this game. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, I want to add something, uh, some of the artists in Syria there and brought the censorship. Uh, one of them was killed in a very horrific, horrific way, sent to his parents, and, uh, or they called his parents and come and pick me. So the other one is, that was a singer in, a, in Hama, in the city of Hama. Uh, the second one is a cartoonist named Ali Farzad, who is globally famous. Um, he dared and painted the president himself in a funny way. So uh, he kidnapped, they kidnapped him, broke his fingers and throw him, he's 70, 73 years old, and throw him somewhere and somebody found him, took him to the hospital. Now he lives in Dubai. The third one is Malik Jandani, a pianist who lives in Atlanta, Georgia. When things started in Syria, he took his piano from the White House and started to play music, nothing, he said nothing. Just raising awareness about Syria, what's going on, so please stop this killing. I don't know who is responsible. They attack his parents, who are seniors, 70 and 80 years age. His father is a doctor, and they beat him, beat him savagely. So, we can do it. The risk is to, this is it, we can do it. And it's, it, it exceeds only courage. We have the ability. We are very talented people. We, we've got talent in, in all over the places, Syria, Egypt, Iran. By the way, you have amazing, we deal with some of the Iranian artists. And I, with all the respect, they have amazing theater, amazing cinema, movies. We know how to do it, but the risk would be too high. And going off of that, you know, speaking of creating work and the huge risk involved in a lot of these places, uh, why, you know, I have a question, you know, why create the work? You know, is the, what is the artist's role? What is the artist's objective? Um, um, yeah, we, we wanted to talk a little bit about the role of theater, which has always been, you know, traditionally referred to as the mirror of society, the way to reflect us back to ourselves. And I wanted to ask the three of you, in, in the times of crisis, in the times of upheaval, um, is theater, but specifically political theater, called on to do more? Are we, are we being asked to do more than just provide the mirror, but are we asked to become active in the conflict and take a stand or speak on behalf of the voiceless? Is, is there an action that's being required of us? Um, or is it just continually to reflect and discuss and sort of provide meaning to what's going on? And also, is there also part of us as artists that are required to, you know, present new possibilities for the future, to not only engage with what's happening right now, but to how do we overcome this? How do we envision a future and possibilities that are beyond this? And what do you feel the, you know, the artist world is and what the most important thing is? Whoever wants to. I would like to say something. Politics in our country is not like politics in Europe. Politics in Syria is not like politics in the United States or Australia or even Africa. My friend's father was behind bars for 14 years just for one sentence. He asked in Syria, he said, why in this country the decision could be taken by one person. He said one sentence and he was thrown for 14 years. So politics in theater 
in Syria is something fighting against a family. They don't allow you to speak politics on theater because it's their mission and their speciality. They decide, you have to follow. When they change, you change. I've always dreamed of a play like I saw yesterday between the poet and the translator. Because of my languages, I said, I can do so many languages. Let's do an Israeli and a Syrian who meet somewhere in a train, in, in an airport. Some, I couldn't dare to say the idea, to mention. So politics in theater so far was fighting against the umbrella. The, the snake's head, which wasn't allowed. Now that the revolution is taking place, we are, we are not doing so much. We are singing in the streets. We are moving with the singer. We are dancing for the fight like they did to do in Vietnam. But I'm sure after the after revolution in Syria, the new Syria, the democratic Syria will be settled. I think we can discuss at that time what political theater could be because people can think, um, think and act, uh, I mean, liberally. Uh, what is political theater now is what people do in streets and sing together and dance together and move together and uh, paint together and sometimes they sing and cry from happiness. At the beginning, one singer, he sang, he composed a song. He lives in Paris. The song was named, titled Yahé. As a musician, I can say, musically, it's, it's a little, I, I don't want to be uh, offensive, but the level musical, musically or artistically is nothing. But the impact of that song moved the whole Syria. Everyone, everybody, even musicians, they were singing the song and people who were, who, who were cat or coat singing that song are still in jail from two years. I think that um, I will say that um, uh, we do have Layla uh, Suleiman, or Layla Suleiman, um, she is a director, and she said um, on behalf of, her, uh, of herself and the other artists that um, every artist um, should um, fight with the weapon that he has, she has, okay, um, but I can't. Um, I should admit that so the, the same circumstances, if you don't have this um, um, kind of liberal uh, uh, climate, it would be um, useless to, uh, to just to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to express um, liberal um, uh, ideas and something like that because Somehow, um, yes, um, as I said, um, when the, the artist um, uh, stepped um, to um, the streets, um, you know, somehow they also they, uh, they do that and they, they are afraid of um, having attacked by the military um, forces also. You, you know, um, they, they can, um, if they exceed um, or um, overcome the, uh, the, the, the red lines, maybe they, they can uh, do some, something um, that to, them, uh, to the, uh, the audience also. So uh, we in, um, humbly need to, to have this kind of um, liberalism first in our countries, okay? And it will happen, but just, um, um, I think, as I said, it will take time, okay? 
and um, of course so the, the officer then could um, disseminate themselves uh, you know, over the, the, the country and um, they can um, uh, not just comment on what is happening, they also could um, anticipate and really participate with um, 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 creative uh, ideas about how to, uh, to um, develop our country and so on. Um, when we speak about mirroring society, um, I mean, we can assort three, I mean, and we can recognize three, three kinds of um, um, theater in Iran in general. Uh, first of all, uh, a very um, dominant uh, kind of Iranian theater belonged, belonged to the government, which is the mirror of the government and is supported by government economically. So, but, but it is something that everybody knows it and everybody can recognize that it is a, a performance uh, which is based on government's voice. Uh, it has its own audience, but um, not, not general audience. The second, the second kind of Iranian theater is kind of experimental theater. When, when, I, when I say experimental, maybe you think that it's kind of very I mean, um, avant-garde theater, but it is not. It's something that uh, nobody can't understand it. I mean, just the people who make it can understand it, or maybe not. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure that audience can't understand it, can't get the meaning of the can't get the meaning meaning of the performance from the bottoms of the signs. So uh, the government is very angry with this kind of theater because it, it doesn't look like governmental and at the same time it is governmental so because it is a completely um how can i say it is mm, mm, mine and one of my friends um, um idea to call it a kind of anti-viruses um, theater does it make sense yeah. i mean something that has no virus is completely healthy uh, in the government's view so, but it is experimental. When you see, um, it can uh, cross the borders, it can go to uh, other countries, and every people from other countries can uh, get it as a very avant-garde theater, but nobody um, just consider that it is something has no meaning for Iranian audiences. And it is something that is really spreading out in Iran because some very, very young people who doesn't want to be the mirror of the government, but at the same time, they want to do something uh, without crossing, without encountering with red lines. They, um, I mean, um, automatically uh, just choose this kind of theater. And the third, third kind is a very, very social kind of theater, which comes from um, dramas first, and then goes to performance. Um, these are kind of theater, I, I, can, I can say some names like Mohammad Yaboudi, like Mohammad Reza Irab, like um, Mohammad Rahmanian, all their names. <laughs> but all, all, I mean, these, these kinds of playwrights and some other others, uh, they just try to, to be really a, a real mirror of the society, but with some experimental structure. Uh, and they always have some problems uh, in crossing, I mean, encountering with red lines. But um, I, 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 it's my suggestion, if you want to get the real mirror of Iranian theater, you need to start from these writers and never trust to experimental theater from Iran. <laughs> <laughs> so going off of that, you know, theater as a space is, is a communication, right? We are trying to communicate something to our audiences, and so, we're just wondering, you know, who who do you who are the audiences right now? Like in Egypt, who you mentioned there's a lot of more street theater going on. But have the audiences shifted and who are the ideal audiences? And also, what how do you what do you think the importance is of you know Egyptian work Iranian work being presented in the United States and being communicated to different cultures? Um, okay. Actually, even now, uh, we, we, we haven't reached this kind of shift in, in, uh, in the um, source of audience that um, 
can be uh, the, the performances. And as I said, we, we haven't reached um, yet um, the, the perfect uh, situation uh, or perfect uh, circumstances that helps um, um, the, the, the artist to, um, to perform what, what he really believes and what he, he wants to say. Um, and, and for that, the, 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 the main hope for, for, for us now um, that the, the artists go to them, okay, um, this would be um, a kind of, um, you know, um, uh, tempted them to, uh, to, to, to come back to the, uh, the theaters. Actually, um, our theaters have been evacuated. Um, maybe um, 15 years ago, so something like that. Um, um, when you when you look at the, 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 the sort of audience that attend the, the performance, you will see something like um, friends of the, the artist, um, their families, their um, um, the uh, some um, critics. You know, um, I don't know. Um, it wasn't a real audience, you know. Um, um, the, the real audience um, that we, we had once it was in um, the Skistis after the uh, revolution of 1952. Um, we also um, took time, something like um, six years or eight years, something like that, and then um, uh, we, we, we had um, a real um, intellectual um, uh, movements in the, the, uh, the artists um, and really the, the audience were um, for real, they, they um, attended the, the uh, performance of that because they believe that um, uh, it can discuss their, their um, uh, social life and also um, they can get knowledge and cultural um, cultural uh, aspects from, uh, from other worlds through this um, uh, theater. Uh, but now, no. Um, also, <laughs> we will have to, um, um, to wait until having um, the rest in, uh, in our country to, to preach the, uh, the, the real audience. Yeah. Um. I remember now a smart theater director who, who used to, he's, he's also a politician, and they, the censorship told him not to approach politics in his theater. He said, I will not. Mm -hmm. Theater is theater, politics is politics. So he was smart enough to pick a theme of from life and make it his political struggle. And he picked love as a theme for his place in his career. And he was referring to love, but he was he was talking about love referring to his political freedom, political speech freedom of speech, freedom of expression. So, as an intellectual and, and as an ordinary people in the audience, you could understand his mission and understand his, um, I mean, every, everything he was referring to. And you could say, this is politics, it doesn't look like. So, Smart people, all the smart people can use hints in theater, in political theater. And we also have a very, very low level of political theater who is ruled by the government in order to criticize small people in the government. And that's it. And Jay, you mentioned that you did a show in the U.S., right? Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what that was and what you were hoping to yes. communicate with that? Actually, my wife and I came, she came with an idea that uh, we have to do something. Uh, uh, she was painting some 
uh, about about uh, real um, stories from the revolution, people that we knew, and they have um, terrific experiences with this in this revolution. And she said that let's do something on stage because you know acting is more faster to the people's minds, people's minds and hearts. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, we created, she created a monologue about her friend who was, who was, I, I would think she, she can tell us later about that. And my piece was um, from a real story that happened, not that tough, but it seemed tough and strong. It, it is, they, they used to call people to pick up uh, their relatives bodies. So come and pick up, take your uh, son's body or father or brother. You have your uh, 100 dead people. So come and see who is your brother, who is your relative. And the father goes to pick his son, his son's body who used to be in detention. And once he is looking, when he was looking at the dead bodies, he sees his 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 son. And he was looking at his son. He was waiting in queue. And suddenly, he sees somebody among the dead bodies moving. So. The tragedy was, or the drama was, what should, what should I do at this moment? Pick, no. pick my son or the living body, the still living body. I don't know if he's he Muslim, Christian, Alawi, Druze, secular, atheist. What to do? So they say, hey, he was just. Hey, are you here? Do you have anybody here? They're so savages. And he said, Oh, yeah, yes. That's my father, brother. Because it was the, the best uh, age. And he picks the one who, 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 who doesn't know. And he takes me. That was the scene we created. And I was so afraid at the beginning to do it on stage. And where did you do it? Okay. In Minneapolis. Okay. In Minneapolis, in one of the biggest, uh, I don't remember the stage name, but it belonged to the University of Minnesota. And who was your audience for that? Um, students, artists, because we spread um, uh, the flyers all over by email, by, um, uh, yes, uh, on the walls, uh, professors, from the University of Minnesota came, so the audience was more than 400. That uh, was, I think it was. So you just brought up a question that I'd like to feed into our, our final question to the panel, and then we'd like to open it up to your questions. Um, finally, do you, how much do you feel that religion has an influence on the work created in the theater? Is it sort of a cat and mouse, like it is with the censorship mm -hmm. issue? Is it, um, you know, in, in Egypt and in Syria where the government is in transition, um, how much do you feel that appeasing a certain party or looking good to a certain party is necessary to the survival of the, of the work as an artist? Um, and do you think that theater needs to be secular in order to be effective? I think it's my belief that theater cannot be religious, uh, cannot be attached to religion. Religion must be at home. What well, this is my belief, and sorry, I'm angry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do respect half of religions, uh, and. I live in an artistic community. I used to live in an artistic community in Damascus. 
which we come from every religion and sect and beliefs and backgrounds and uh, but I think religion has a very good very big impact in our communities uh, not the way the regime showed the world the whole world what is it in Syria I'm talking about Syria the regime wanted to show people to show the world to make the world fear of Islamists which is not true religion has impact in, in, in the Arab world but not the way uh, they try to convince everybody what I believe is we can mention religion sometimes but it's not necessary and I think theater must be um, yes uh, apart from religion and uh, uh, what I know and what I'm sure about that these days religion in our country in Syria specifically has nothing to do with I mean, it has uh, uh, to interfere with arts. And I saw so many examples where religion, both religions, or <laughs> both religions in our country are hanging arts to make something, to make, to, 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 to get rid of this monster which we have. Well, the other people that we were with you, um, and I should underline and um, emphasize that um, in our countries, and especially in, in Egypt, actually, um, um, the main characteristic of the, um, the Egyptian um, people, um, they are moderate, okay? They can't um, accept um, someone to impose on them um, um, any kind of um, restrictions um, in the name of religion and uh, to be fair um, uh, about our situation in Egypt um, actually the brutal attacks and the, um, um, the blind censorship that we have um, been suffering from um, it started with uh, the Mubarak regime okay so it doesn't relate to the Islamists and um, if you really concentrate with um, the political scene um, in Egypt now, um, the Islamists um, haven't done anything uh, to, uh, to prevent or to, uh, um, to, to stop anyone actually till now. Um, yes, we do have um, uh, what you call extremists, but those people will be stopped by the um, normal um, people in Egypt. Yes. All of us will stop them. As we refuse to have um, um, the, um, the restrictions uh, by the war regime, we, we will also um, refuse um, anyone who, uh, or um, reject anyone who, who come and say to us uh, in the name of Allah, um, uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we prevent that or we, uh, we don't accept that, no. Um, and to give you an example about that, actually um, in the um, Mubarak reign, uh, we um, suffer from a very strange kind of um, um, movies in, in the cinema. Um, <laughs> it was trivial um, in its um, uh, themes, um, and the people, they, 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 they were very smart, okay? They couldn't accept this kind of triviality, and they demand um, um, from the, the artist to, to present something uh, more um, reasonable and at the same time um, it's not um, 
we don't have this kind of openness um, um, like uh, we see in Europe or in, in uh, USA, um, nudity and something like that. But at the same time, um, we, we are not um, this kind of restricted people, okay? We can't accept um, um, uh, sexual scenes and something like that, but to be um, what, what you call, um, uh, there is to be logical, you know, or to, to have a, a reason to put this scene during the, the, the context. Yeah, so that's it. Do you want to discuss a little bit about the, the newspaper in Iran and how it's been responding to the Arab Spring? Okay, so uh, let me add something and then I will share. Uh, actually, uh, when, when we speak about the relation between religion and theater in Iran, it's a very, I mean, we are in a very difficult position because um, in, in the center, in the capital, in Tehran, which is the cultural center of Iran, um, theater is not religious. I mean, speak, I speak, I'm speaking about mm, the second and the third um, source I um, already have mentioned. Uh, it's not religious, and nobody asks it to be religious. I mean, experiment theaters, experimental theater can 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 can't. I mean, cannot to be religious. Uh, but I want to add something, which is. Um, Theater in Iran should be religious to affect general people. It's, it's the point. I mean, when, when we speak about Tehran, and when we, when we speak about educated intellectual people, okay, they know what they do, they, they want democracy, they want um, freedom, and they know what to catch freedom, and they really try to do that uh, in their own way, in a, a kind of Iranian way, not really protesting, Iranian way. But, but um, uh, what about small cities? What about um, uh, villages? When we speak about Iran, we are speaking about something like 75, 80 million people, and just uh, about 11 million, more or less, live in Tehran and some small cities around it. But what about other, other cities? People in other cities are really, really religious. And we can't ignore this fact when we speak about Iran. So I think, um, I mean, many people in small cities look at theater like the um, devil's instrument, you see. And they don't let their girls to involve the theater. But they, 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 they let their girls, their daughters, to, they, they, I mean, um, boys and girls, to engage with religious theater because they feel it is a safe place and it is a kind of, um, um, I mean, they, um, if they do theater, they do something for God. So, yeah, so I think in a kind of new interpretation of religion, we can think about a kind of religious theater which can affect uh, on um, people who live in uh, small cities. And I think it's something that we need to think about when we speak. Because I, I think, um, um, just one sentence, um, not, nothing more. In, in Tehran, um, the, the ritual of going to theater is a kind of going to party. Because we know each other very well. We say, oh great, your, your performance was perfect, and you please come to mine, which is in next week. So everybody, everybody knows each other. It's kind, a kind of party, and we know each other. We, we know what we want to do. And so we are something beyond being affected by theater. Um, I, I, I mean, it is small cities which really, really need theater. It's better. And uh, I, I, mean, I mean, actually, I, when I was asked to come to this um, really, really nice um, panel and place, nice, uh, San Francisco. <laughs> I I brought something. Um, I I thought what happened. What I mean, how Arab Spring really uh, affected on Iranian art. I can say nothing. There is nothing about that. I mean, especially in theater, we didn't work on Arab Spring. But um, newspapers and uh, um, some magazines 
um, just mirrored out screen. And I brought some of them. I thought maybe you would like to see how uh, it is mirrored in our newspapers and in our magazines. But I didn't bring all of them, um, some of them which I thought are more important than others. Um, I, first of all, I have to say that uh, there is something, I mean, there are two, two completely different views to Arab Spring in Iran. A kind of very a conservative, conservative view. Three or, uh, four. Pardon? Three or four different views. Three or four. Okay, I, I just <laughs> sorted it in two, but, and, but you can add me um, the, uh, the other two. Uh, first is kind of very conservative view to Arab Spring in, uh, in kind of uh, in some um, newspapers like Keihan and so on, which prefer to call it Islamic awakeness instead of Arab Spring, because they want to say that it is not something nation nationalistic um, revolution, but, but it is a kind of Islamic um, revolution, and it's under the influence of Islamic Republic of Iran. And uh, it is a kind of uh, revolution to spread out Islam and to fight with Western countries. But on the other hand, some more reformist, um, reformist views to this, to, to this phenomenon, to the, to the Arab Spring, prefer to call it Arab Spring, prefer to say that it is under, again, under the influence of green movement, and to say that it is not something to fight with West, Western countries. It is a phenomenon in which West and East, West and Middle East, try to be friends with the um, level right. Does it make sense? Okay. So, for example, I just quickly um, say what they happen, what, what they speak about. In, in a newspaper called Sharp, which is one of the most reformist um, um, newspaper in Iran, uh, a writer wrote about uh, the influence of literature, for example, um, Darvish poems on um, Arab Spring, or in the other, um, from the same, from the same um, newspaper, um, Tariya Azad Armaki, who is a socialist person, uh, he spoke about how Arab Spring is beyond the ideology and is something beyond the ideology, beyond the leadership, and so on, is something that just happened by people. And uh, in, again, in Chad, there is a um, there is a kind of interview with Chomsky, uh, which is, um, um, I mean, um, focuses on uh, how the revolution is a kind of criticized the power um, instead of um, just changing the, the position of the power. And one the, um, a very interesting um, article I found, which is uh, by Muhammad, which is written by Muhammad Abu Chani, and the title is Democratizing or Demo Democratized. I, it, and it um, is about uh, is that is this Arab Spring something that Western countries try to be happened in uh, Middle East, or it is something that um, was happened by itself by people? But in the newspapers like Kehan, um, I found something that the Shariat Madari, Mr. Shariat Madari is a very well-known person uh, in Kehan newspaper. Um, he said that you call it Arab Spring. To, national, to nationalize the transformation of the Middle East, but you have to call it Islamic awakeness. Or um, instead of saying Arab Spring, say it Islamic identity. And there are many, many um, other articles that if you would like, I can, can put them out. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, they can read them. Yes, thank um, you. Just a bit more time. How, how are we doing? Yeah, yeah. Right, um, please. Oh, we have a sign. Okay, so we have about, um, we have a firm 10 minutes okay. for questions, and then we will go to the Great, so we'll try to give the questions and answers brief, I guess, so we can get as many as we can. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you think there's such a thing as a bourgeois artist, you, you from Syria? 
Do you think of such a thing as a bourgeois artist? Is it possible that some artists are bourgeois, you know what I mean? They're reactionary? No, so I don't do understand. Do you think there is such a thing as a bourgeois artist? Do you I'm think... Let me finish this. Bourgeois. Yeah. A bourgeois. Huh? Uh, en français, a bourgeois? Yeah, yes. Wait. A bourgeois artist who is reactionary? Do you think that it is possible that people who support the uh, the, the uh, Assad regime might be opposed to the Israeli incursion in that area? Do you think that you have the freedom of speech, you come to the empire, you come to the empire to support the United States or support free speech here in which this government supplies weapons and billions to the Israelis to kill the Palestinians. Now you are, have, are able to speak freely here like I am. However, our government, my government, not yours, my government is killing millions of people around the world. So now you are free to say what you can. I have been free to say what I, I could. I got arrested for saying some of the things that you said in this country. How do you like that? It's amazing. We found that there are certain people who are bourgeois reactionary artists. They are not just free speakers, are free, free of all their material conditions. And then you find that there are progressive people who are artists. Thank you so much for this question. Um, I'm recently here. Um, I'm not awake yet from the long, long uh, sleep in my country. When I first came to the United States, I was amazed how people can speak up. I compare with my country. You, sir, compare with what you need. What I need now is to remo remove the cancer from my body. I don't care about anything else in, 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 in any aspect before removing this, getting rid of this cancer, which is eating my body part after part. I do understand what your needs are. But I didn't have enough time to think about everything, anything else except my people's problems now, which is <clears throat> I have so many friends in jail. My friend actor has passed last week. My cousin two months ago. So my parents are under shelling. Nowadays, I need to think about and focus and concentrate on this little circle. Maybe in the future when I'll be um, more relaxed and more, I can think about something else and maybe here, maybe back to my country where I will have the free speech. But uh, thank you so much for your question. I, I do uh, respect your uh, perspectives, but I can't think about them now. I can't even. Yes, but I do respect them. Thank you so much. That, that's what this country is doing. That's what this country, that's what this country is filled with. People who cannot think of anyone else except themselves. So it's a great immigrant country. We have hundreds of people from South America and from Europe who have come here because there is free speech. And in their country, supported by the UN, UN, United States, they're being oppressed. Thank you. you understand Let's move on to the next question. We're very limited time. If I uh, uh, could ask a very specific question in Syria, Egypt, and in Iran, the possibility of professionalization of theater, independent of governmental subsidies. Uh, uh, Dr. Stanley, you're a published playwright. Can a young uh, playwright in Iran or in Egypt or in Syria uh, before uh, this uh, horrid condition or after, live of uh, publication, performances, etc., independent of governmental subsidies? Not at all. Not at all. Actually, um, it's even with um, governmental subsidy, it's impossible to live with theatre in Iran. So, um, at, at this, I mean, it is about maybe four or five years that government 
don't help theater practitioners economically. So what we gave from a government is just censorship. Um, so, um, but even even if government helped us uh, as a, I mean, kind of, um, how can I say, just by, by such side, uh, we, we, we couldn't we couldn't live with theater. It's why that we always do many things. We write for theater, for TV, for film, we teach, we drive. <laughs> Similar situation yeah. in the United States. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, I will uh, answer with, uh, just two, uh, two uh, sentences. Um, in a country like the uh, US, and um, really they, they do have um, a very huge budget for, for the, uh, the artists. The artists complain about the same situation. They can't live uh, from the, the money of the subsidies and uh, from the government. Okay? And um, in Egypt, actually, part of um, the, the problem that we, um, we suffered from um, that our uh, theaters um, um, get um, low uh, levels during the, uh, um, the, uh, the, um, the last decades, the, the artists, uh, you know, uh, moved to um, the cinema and the television to uh, to get more money. Okay, it's it's not possible to, to live on the uh, the money of the art uh, the, the theater. <coughs> no, it's impossible. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Whoa. Uh, we actually have one time for one more quick question, about two minutes. And I know that Michael there yes. also had a question, and, and I encourage people to approach all of the panelists uh, between other panels. Well, a, a question for Ms. Um, about uh, your the wonderful story about your play, about the, the censor, but uh, it struck me, it, it was very amusing, but it struck me that maybe it's quite subversive what you did, and, and some of the questions that made me think to ask are, did you expect that it would be rejected, or did you, were you trying to deliver a message to them and convert them? And then what happened afterwards? When the play was rejected, is it over with? Can you give it to other people to read, or is that really, that's it? Writing a play is an enormous undertaking, as you know, and to go that far and stop. And I just wonder what, does it really stop there? Uh, actually, we, we all, all the writers in Iran live with their hopes. So when I wrote that play, I thought maybe I can find a way. And I, I, I still I'm trying to find a way. <laughs> but uh, I have to say that um, censors are really, really human beings. They are different kind of people. Sometimes, if you're lucky, the one who read your play is the kind person. And you can speak with him. Uh, they are always men. You can speak with him. And uh, you can convince him to accept your play with, very, very, with some very, very minor um, kind of um, I mean, changes, but I was not lucky in this case. My, in my, my last play, I, I mean, in case of my last play, Born on, the, the title of the play is Born on 6, has also such as the Yek. 90, um, 1361. Something, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, in my last play, I was really, really lucky. The censor was my friend. He, he was my classmate. So I spoke with him, and he easily accepted me. I told him that no, please don't don't worry about this and don't worry about it. Just let let it be performed. And then once you get uh, you we encounter any problem, we will stop it. And he accepted us. No. And we uh, encountered problems after one one month performing. And I'm so happy that I could have one month performance for my last. But for in this case, I I was not lucky. I didn't know the censor, so they. So I, I, I say that the, the thing which is very, very, very good in my country is that writers write their plays regardless how censorship uh, will, um, I mean, treat them. Does it make sense? Uh, can I do any time just to read a really quick closing thing? 20 seconds. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, we, just, um, we have a, a short statement from a colleague of ours in Syria um, that recently fled Syria. Um, we're not going to say her name just for purposes, but JJ is just going to read a quick thing just to kind of give us something to think about leaving the panel. 
If we were to ponder the current crisis that the regimes of the Arab countries are going through, we will find out that the main cause behind it consists of the marginalization of the people and their being banned from taking part in the decision-making process. There is one side, the majority, that is completely pushed aside. Um, our political authority is conversing with itself. No dialogue is being held between the two sides. If the theater's main language is dialogue, then isn't the theater a model that must be followed? If the absence of dialogue is the main cause for the crisis, will the presence of dialogue serve to solve the crisis and to resolve it? Can the theater, which is dialogue-based structure, which is a dialogue-based structure, represent an alternative for the resistance? Therefore, is theater at this point a useful process? It seems that I have started to get closer to finding an answer to all of my questions. The theater has started to fall into the context of the current events. It has even started to position itself at the heart of this context. Yes, we do need the theater today, and we seem to need it more than any time in the past. The theater most certainly will help us, the people whose, whose humanity has been marginalized and stepped on to confront our oppressive regimes. So just something to think about and ponder and to continue this conversation at lunch or later on or next week. Um, and I just want to thank all of our panelists um, for sharing your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, thank you all very much for your time. So, um, housekeeping stuff. We need to be, if you would like to continue attending the panels today, the next panel will be at 1 p.m. short, uh, sharp, which is a short amount of time to catch a lunch. I would highly encourage that you enjoy lunch across the street at the coffee bar. They have a variety of um, warm items, salads, as well as packaged sandwiches.